One of the reasons that a person who cheat gives is because of lack of sex. The third reason that people give is boredom, guys. And I think I understand. Imagine if you go to work, come back, you clean, you cook, you do all these things, and then your husband come and watch TV, and then that's all you do in your life. And then come Sunday, you go to church and come back. There's just boredom. There's nothing else that you are doing. You are not traveling. You are not eating out. You're not, you are not cooking together. You are not playing together. Obviously, that marriage will be boring. And then now when your husband go out there, when your wife go out there and have so much fun, they will prefer to go out there instead of spending time with you. I recently got invited into a marriage counseling where the husband was cheating. And now this husband has a girlfriend not far from the house and he doesn't see anything wrong with that. As long as he's providing for the family, he feels the wife should accept. And now when I look at the reasons why this guy is actually cheating, I could see that he actually learned that from his father and now he feels feels like the wife should understand just because his mother understood and in today's video i'm going to give some of the reasons that people give when they cheat and then after i'll end the video with what the bible says about cheating adultery and all these things that contribute to many people getting divorced One of the reasons that a person who cheat gives is because of lack of sex in their marriage. This is not the main reason why a person should cheat. This is one of the circumstantial reasons that we give when we are caught cheating. This can be a problem in our marriage because if a husband leave their house or a wife leave their house and that department is not taken care of, especially if they don't have self-control, which is one of the fruit of the spirit from Galatians 5 verse 22. So that person will go out there and will be tempted. It is so important that we make sure that we fulfill these duties in our marriage because even that Bible says that we shouldn't deprive each other when it comes to sex. The second reason that people give is because of lack of support and also cooperation in marriage. And I know for a fact that when I got married, the first argument that I had with my husband, I was just shouting and shouting and talking and saying all sorts of things which were not related to what we were discussing on. And it took my husband to say, wait, stop. In this marriage, we will not communicate with that. We will always maintain respect whenever we talk about issues that we do not agree with. So it is so important that you deal with the way you cooperate with each other, with the way you support each other. It's so important in your marriage to support each other. Because if you are not supporting each other, your wife will find some other people who will support them. And your husband will find someone who will support them. And it is so sad to find people at work who are supporting more than your husband. It is so sad to find your best friend supporting you in this thing that you want to do, in this thing that you love so much, but then your husband is not supporting you. So you do not need to understand what your wife is so passionate about but then it is your responsible to support your wife to support your husband it is so important because then once they spend more time with people who are outside they will be tempted to cheat the third reason that people give is boredom guys and i think i understand imagine if you go to work come back you clean you cook you do all these things and then your husband come and watch tv and then that's all you do in your life and then come sunday you go to church and come back there's just boredom there's nothing else that you are doing you are not traveling you are not eating out you're not you are not cooking together you are not playing together obviously that marriage will be boring and then now when your husband go out there when your wife go out there and have so much fun they will prefer to go out there instead of spending time with you so it is so important that we are intentional and try to do things that we like in our marriage the things that i like my husband doesn't like and i think it works out that way because then we get to learn from each other if my husband likes soccer then i must sit and watch soccer with him and if i like camping then it is important for my husband to also support me in doing the things that i like so it is important to talk about what you like and make sure that you do together because if you don't do it together you will do it out there and then you will prefer to be out there than in your marriage the fourth reason is those who commit adultery are usually people who are not accountable to their marriage and now when you change and say those vows in front of god when you say i will love this woman when you say i will love this man and then one day you are not accountable to that then those people usually even in counseling they will just go there because the wife said let's go to counseling otherwise i'm divorcing but then they do not go there because they see the reason of why they need to be there so those people are usually not accountable accountable to their marriage.
marriage. Reason number six, the people who usually commit adultery, they usually have this attitude of entitlement. It is all about them and they feel like they have the right to do that. It is so important to address it the very first time when it happens because if this person do it the first time and then you forgive them and then they do it the second time and then you forgive them and then they do it the third time, they tend to continue doing that because they feel entitled to do that. Reason number seven is the things that we see on TV, is the things that we watch, is the things that we hear, is the things that we see on social media and even in our social environment, things that people do and then you see so many people who are cheating and then you think you can also cheat. These are the things that are not good. Whatever you spend time doing in your life, whatever you feel in your mind, if you feel your mind with the things from the Bible, with the things that are holy, the fruit of the Spirit will show. But then if you fill your mind with things that are not holy, the fruit of the Spirit will show. But Reason number eight is the people who often cheat, they usually come from that family where a father or a mother used to cheat. And they, obviously, if they learn from that, it is so important that a person who comes from that family, they must make the decision to actually respect their wife, to actually respect what they are going to teach their kids. And it is so important that we actually learn and correct these things before it is transferred to our kids. Because we want to create a generation where they will love their wives, where they will love their husband. And and there won't be any adultery in their marriage. Reason number nine is people who often want to test their limits and want to live on the edge and just cheat to see what will happen and just cheat to see if they will get away with that. And sometimes it's just a game to them and not knowing that it actually affects the other half. So guys, if you want to test your limits, there's bungee jumping, there's hiking, there's Mount Kirilimanjaro. You can go and test your limits and leave cheating out of this. Reason number 10 is because you try to resolve this specific issue in your life over and over again. You try to communicate, you try to tell your spouse about how you feel about a certain issue and then they are not changing. And usually often people like that will go and cheat as a result of frustration. So now if you are not able to resolve a problem in your marriage and you tried the Bible, you try praying together, it is important to go to counseling. I know some people will say, I will not go to counseling because black people don't go to counseling. But then if it gets to that point when you are not able to resolve a problem, it is important that you go to someone else who is not involved in your marriage, who will see both sides and actually try and resolve the issue both of you and that is if a person is willing to work on their marriage because sometimes you find that you are often trying to resolve an issue but then one party is not actually coming to the party in making sure that this issue is resolved so guys try and find help that is if both of you are still committed into this marriage reason number 11 is because of punishment so now if a person does something and they come and ask for forgiveness and you feel like you haven't forgiven that person it is so important that you deal with this issue deal with this issue with god because sometimes we make a choice to forgive but then in our hearts we don't truly forgive so only the holy spirit will help you to forgive the person and truly forgive that person that is if they mean it when they ask for forgiveness so punishing a person by doing something wrong by going out there and cheating it is not the solution it is actually building and putting more fire into this marriage and this will actually destroy your marriage because you didn't truly forgive so make sure that when you forgive you truly forgive and you move on from that issue we need to understand that all these reasons that i've listed these are circumstantial factors these are not the main reason why a person will cheat we will now go to the bible and read what the bible says why a person cheats let's look at what the bible says the main reason why a person will cheat Matthew 15 verse 19 For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. You can see from this verse that the evil thoughts, the adultery is actually coming from our heart. If our hearts are not truly transformed and we are not obedient to what God is saying to his word, we will obviously go and cheat. Either make the tree good and its fruits good, or make the tree bad and its fruits bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. So whatever you do, whatever is in your heart, 
it will manifest outside that's why you cannot plant an orange and then reap an apple whatever you plant if you're going to plant evil if you're going to go out there and your eyes are open to see all the girls that are around there or your eyes are open to see all the men that are out there those thoughts those things that you are seeing those things that you are feeling in your mind those are the things that will come because out of the evil heart the fruit as well will be evil James 1 verse 13 to 16. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is loved and enticed by his own desires. Then desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin. And sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. Guys, let us not entertain thoughts in our minds. A simple example is when we look at celebrities and then we'll see I can marry Rihanna or maybe when you look at certain people who are bottlers and then we'll think, okay, that person can be my husband. In our minds, we can be playing at that point, but then those thoughts that we actually entertain and think we are playing and think we are joking and maybe those are the desires that we are not telling people, those are the thoughts that actually will actually trip us and then we'll do things that we are not supposed to do. I'm counseling with a person who actually cheated and then they would often say that I do not know what I am doing. And then the response to this person when they say that you must usually use the scriptures because all of this is coming from their heart. That's why we find most Christians are actually cheating, they're actually having girlfriends and then these are the things that are actually coming from our hearts. So why do men who often call themselves Christians usually fall for this sin? I'm going to give you a list of reasons of why do we often fall. The first reason is we do not fear God and we don't understand God. The second reason is because we are friends with people who are living this life. We often talk about it and actually even enjoy how this person cheated with this person and now is cheating with this person. We enjoy such talks and we don't see the sin in it and then the importance of not doing it is actually reduced reason is because our eyes are actually are led to sexual sin when we see a person walking by instead of fleeing like joseph did we actually tend to stare and look and analyze and it is through this analyzing when we go deeper and deeper into sin the fourth reason is we suppress god's truth and warning about these things because god knew that these things will happen there are warning in the bible and because we don't read the bible or we read the bible but then we are not applying it in our lives i mean there are so many scriptures which warns us about other two sexual sin but because we do not put that and apply in our lives we will fall for these sins another reason is because we think god doesn't see god is omnipotent god is omniscient he is all-knowing and he is everywhere at the same time so if you think god doesn't see and if you think that you are a christian and god doesn't see you are actually lying to yourself and god will deal with you. another reason is because we want to test the limits and i know how easily it is to enjoy such relationships where you just sneak out and go to your girlfriend or where you just sneak out and go to your boyfriend but then everything that is hidden will come out eventually and then the results of that will be destroying Another reason we think sin is not serious and we think there are sins which are serious and there are sins which are not serious. The Bible says that sin has no degree. Any sin actually separates you from God and you do not want to be separated from God. Another reason we think that the grass is greener on the other side. Guys, be careful because the grass is not greener on the other side. The true colors of that person will come out and then you will be shocked and you will actually miss that girlfriend, you will miss that wife, you will miss that husband who you cheated on because the grass is not greener on the other side. True colors will come out eventually. Thank you so much for watching and I hope we did learn something from this video. This is just one part which will make us avoid divorce because there's so much divorce out there and it is because of these things that we are not actually talking about it. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification and also share the video with people who might need and thank you so much for your support.